Good evening. The scenes of violence and chaos inside the Capitol building in Washington last night, the heart of one of the world's leading democracies, pictures beamed all over the world, the threat to the lives of politicians and staffers, and the fact that the President of the United States appeared intent on instigating a coup have spurred some Republican politicians finally to denounce the man they have lauded for four years. They have stood by saying nothing when Donald Trump told egregious lies, railed against members of his own administration, even his own military leaders. But now, one Republican congresswoman called him a cult leader. Another said, you are done and your legacy will be a disaster. Tonight, we'll devote much of the program to what happens to Donald Trump next and what happens to America. Can the culture wars be brought to an end? After all, more than 70 million Americans voted to give Donald Trump a second term. First, here's our U.S. correspondent, David Grossman, joining us live from Washington, where in the last few minutes there's been a statement from the White House. David. It is almost surreal to think that as the rioters swarmed in and around the Capitol building, endangering the lives of many lawmakers in the land, threatening police officers and tearing up the fabric of the building, Donald Trump was sitting in the White House watching it all unfold and worse, resisting increasingly frantic calls to bring in the National Guard. So how did the call for backup law enforcement unfold? Here's our diplomatic editor, Mark Herb. At very point, you are and have been for many, many years an unofficial advisor to President Trump. You spoke to him, I think, just a couple of weeks ago. If you were speaking to him today, what would you tell him to say or do in the next 13 days, never mind the next months and indeed heading to the next uh, American election? What would be the language you would be telling him to talk in? Would you be reprimanding him? What would you be saying to him to do? Or is he really beyond any counselling? Well, he called me about... Katie Razzle reporting. In a statement, the Treasury told us, we've put in place an unprecedented package of support to protect lives and livelihoods across the country. Well, that's all from us tonight. But before we go, we learned today that UK COVID death toll has now reached 78,508. That's 78,508 individual lives lost. Such numbers are hard to comprehend, hard to visualise. What does 78,508 people even look like? Well, this is what it looks like. That's very nearly the full capacity of the Olympic Stadium from the London 2012 Games. Good night.